Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing tonight? I see three people are in here. Nobody's chatting yet. How's everybody doing? I've got coffee. Okay, so somebody's going to have to say something. I see two people are sitting here, so say hi. It's hot in Southeast Texas. Though it wasn't as hot today as it has been. Um, I think yesterday the heat index got up to 111 in June. Shouldn't be that hot yet. Lazy Bunny. <laughs> I can drink coffee if it's 150. It is my weakness. Though I do enjoy a good iced coffee every once in a while. But I drink it with just half and half. I don't drink it with sugar. Um, and I can drink it at 6.30 at night. Um, when I, I worked... It's a habit I picked up when I worked at, at the prison. So hopefully we'll get a few more people in here. I don't know where everybody's at. So I shared it. Um, it is a, a habit that I picked up a um, long time ago. I've been drinking coffee literally since I was a little kid. The, a family friend uh, that used to babysit me when I was little of, of my mom's, she was an avid coffee drinker and she would make me a little cup of coffee because she would want somebody to uh, drink coffee with. So I don't know. I couldn't have been more than five or six years old. <laughs> she would make me a little cup of coffee and I drink coffee with her. Uh Okay, that's good. I don't know where everybody's at. Okay. I'm fixing to get on Marco and like, where are you people? Okay, nobody's in here. Nobody's in my live. Where are you guys at? <laughs> I know it is wrong, right? Guilt everybody and say, hey, y'all aren't in here. Um, so Papa is at, at youth tonight. He is a youth leader. Hey, Kendra, are you going to get on the live? Because it's just me and Lazy Bunny in here right now. Nobody's coming tonight. That's okay. We'll just hang out and relax and chill out, huh? I went, um, I had staff meeting today at work. So that was kind of crazy. I've been playing. My garden out there is blowing up. My tomato plants are loaded. And they're all going to ripen about the same time. I'm going to have 50 million tomatoes. I'm going to be canning tomatoes out the wazoo. Christine. That's a great name. I have a, a friend of mine that um, from years ago, I haven't actually haven't talked to her in years. His name was Christine. And then, uh, oh, there's three people. Shayla's here. Yay, Shayla. Shayla, where is everybody? <laughs> so there's Kendra. Hold on. Mia. 
I'll make Kendra a moderator. There we go, Kendra. You're somebody important now. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody's showing up, Shayla. Oh, this was freaky. I've never had this happen before that nobody's shown up. <laughs> um, so my toma my tomato plants are um uh, loaded. My cherry tomato plants are loaded. And um, my habaneros are like going crazy. I just sent uh, about five habaneros uh, to church with Keith to give one of my um, co-workers uh, some habaneros. <laughs> That's awesome. Um and then I was noticing when I was doing my little walk around a while ago, my black eyed pea uh, plant is finally starting to make some black eyed peas. <laughs> There's Lippy. Hi, Lippy. I was starting, Lippy, I'm starting to get nervous. Nobody's showing up. So now Shayla's here. Lippy's here. Um, Christina's here. Kendra's here. So my, my live's not going to be a complete mess tonight. <laughs> I was starting to get worried. Nobody was showing up. <laughs> uh, that, hey, I understand it. I loved your video today. Thank you for uh, doing that. Uh, Shayla, if you haven't seen it, Lippy answered the question on how you can uh, save your squash. Yeah, I understand. And this is kind of a weird uh, time because it's still a lot outside and a lot of people are out in their garden. And I started noticing more and people, more and more people are going live at this time, too. I know. I told her, Shayla, I told her that you and I had been talking that, you know, we didn't know a good way to, to put up squash, you know. Because I'd ask you originally, and uh, you said you usually just, y'all just eat it. Lippy sol solved that problem for us, how you can save it. So if you haven't watched that, uh, oh, cool, you did see it. She and I were talking about it because I said you and I had been talking about it. So now we know. Lippy saved the day. <laughs> so, topic of discussion. It is hotter and blue blazes down here. Yesterday, the heat index was 111 in June. It shouldn't be that hot yet. Shouldn't be. But that tropical storm came through, and we got the, it says the clean side. I consider that the dirty side simply because it brings in all the dry heat. And it was hot. Good Lord, I'm having to water my plants twice because I'm in grow bags. And, and I know that takes out nutrients and all that stuff, but good God in heaven, it's hot. And my, my poor little tomato plants are just wrinkling out there. Uh, of course, I, my, I need to take some pictures of them because my tomato plants are just loaded out there. And the peppers are going crazy. Um my uh, scorpion pepper plant has grown a mile uh, in the last three days. Just, it's thriving. My cucumber plant that's right over here. <laughs> it, I swear, it's got this one little, it's like it's got a mind of its own. Does it? Okay. True story. This little thing keeps trying to grow a little tentacle or whatever that's called, a little vine. Up into my window here, into and grow into the uh, screen, and I have to pull it out of the screen because it wants to grow into the screen. And I sit out here and talk to it. It's like you can't do that, little cucumber plant. I've got you a trellis. Grow up the trellis. You can't grow it. And I'm thinking these people have to think that I'm nuts. 
I know that they think that I am the a crazy white lady. That crazy white lady over there is she's got to be nuts though because she sits out there and talks to her plants. Because I'm like, okay, now I pull it out and say, okay, honey, now you got to crawl up this trellis right here. You can't, you can't grow into the 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 windowsill here. You can't do that. And I'm sitting here, baby, talking baby talk to my plants like I'm a idiot. And I'm over here petting my little tomato plants. It's like, you're doing so good. I'm so proud of you. I, My neighbors probably think I have lost my ever-loving dang mind. They're probably like, that, that white chick down there is crazy. She's out there talking to her plants like a fool. <laughs> I think my husband thinks I've lost my mind, too. I know my daughter thinks I'm crazy and she's in the chat. So I'm waiting for her to say she guys, she really has lost her mind. She really has. But I mean, it's like this plant every day, this cucumber plant, I'm out there detangling it from my, my screen on my window every day. It's little tentacle is going back up into the screen. I know why in June is it 111, 107 degrees? You are crazy. You hear? She said, you are crazy. It's okay. It's okay. The heat, it, it's the heat's fault. They, it, they are my babies. I'll own it. I love it. I water it. I pet its leaves. I talk to it. But I mean, you put so much love and care and energy into these plants, you know, that it feeds you. And it's my sanity. I, I sit here and I, I I walk out there a couple times a day, you know, and just it brings me such peace. It does. I, I can't wait till I can get a big garden out on the farm. I, I really can't because I'm just going to be that crazy lady in a garden walking around. God help me when I get chickens because I'm going to be out there petting my chickens. That's going to be me. I'm going to be out there petting my chickens. I, I'm already naming chickens. And, and, you know, Bertha and Ethel and, you know, I'll be that crazy chicken lady petting my chickens. I remember <laughs> last um, at New Year's when we went up to see my folks, my my, <laughs> my folks neighbor Shayla heard this story. Uh, the the neighbors have chickens and mom took me over there so I could meet the neighbors. And I was on Facebook. If you see the picture of me holding the chicken, I was sitting there petting the chicken and I, I teared up as I'm petting this chicken. And, um, uh, and then like, my mom's like, Missy, are you really going to be crying holding this chicken as I'm sitting here petting this chicken? And and I, I j just had this moment of bliss as I'm, I'm petting on this chicken. And the lady's like, I completely get it. She says, sometimes I cry as I, I pet my chickens too. And, uh, and I'm like, yes, I'm going to sit here and cry as I pet this chicken. It was the sweetest little bantam chicken. I mean, he's a little, one of those little bitty and I'm just sitting here loving on it. was cooing. I I didn't realize chickens purr. It was, you know, it was cooing as I sit here loving on this chicken. And so we go back to the house and I was telling Keith about it. I was like, it was, it was cooing in my arms and I'm tearing up again. And my dad was like, Misty, don't embarrass me in front of the neighbors. <laughs> I think so too. I think they were my plants respond to me, and I think that's why it's making so many tomatoes. I think it's why it's doing, my garden's doing so good. Now, if it makes some darn squash, hey Johnny, how are you doing, sweet friend? So, I have decided that uh, tomorrow is payday. 
from uh, my little job that I have at the church. I'm going to go buy some more squash plants. Because I don't know that I have time um, to, and I may do both. I've got some seeds left to seed start, but I'm just going to go buy some more squash plants at Lowe's and get and plant some. I'm going to have, I may have squash out, out my freaking ears, but I've got three or four more grow bags. I've got plenty of soil. I'm going to plant four or five squash plants. I'm going to have squash plants every everywhere because i want some squash and i refuse to buy it at the store <laughs> but i got tomatoes and i'm gonna have black eyed peas and i'm gonna have peppers but i'm gonna have some squash oh my god has not that the amber alerts been insane I, I know that, and they've been going off like at six in the morning. Carrie's right. The Amber Alerts, there's been one out, two out of Irving. It may have been the same one out of Irving. One out of Waco. Uh, Amber Alerts have been crazy. One out of Gainesville, too, wasn't there? Or was that the same one? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been bad. The Amber Alerts have been insane. So, definitely pray for those kiddos. Uh, and then there was, there was one down here for a teenager. Like a 14-year-old girl that one of the, I think it was one of those, you know, met a guy, an older man on the internet type thing. So a 14-year-old girl. I don't know if they ever found her or not. She's still missing. So she was out of Houston or spring area. Did you hear about that one, Carrie? That one's that as a, a mother of a daughter, I think, oh my gosh, that's another one right there. Another Amber Alert. That may have been the one you just got, Carrie. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but it, it's been crazy, which, you know, I know this is it's a serious subject, but Houston is a a um, a trafficking hub, unfortunately. So. We know that, unfortunately, and so it's always scared me. At being a mother of a daughter, it, it has always, always scared me. Um, that's why I've always kept her close to me. Uh, I, oh my gosh. Yeah, Keith is it. Oh. Before I forget, I have, oh, Keith is not here, but I'm going to show him off anyway. We got our, whoo, really excited about these. Aren't they cute? Uh, Keith loves his Blue Cup Club. I can't speak English in my Cluck Club Club. Club. English is not my first language. Um, and I've got a video coming out Friday. Um, so I'm not going to spoil it. My, my Marco, some of Marco peeps. Well, and I posted on Facebook too. 
I've got a video coming out Friday of something that I got from Two Family Homestead that I'm extremely excited about. So be sure and watch for that video. Also, I released a video today. If you have not watched it yet, I would really, 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 really appreciate you go going in, uh, watching it, giving it some love. Um, I did a corn chowder video. Let me tell y'all what. Um, this was actually the first time I've ever made corn chowder. My husband, and he, he loves my cooking, okay? Believe it or not, as skinny as that man is, he loves my cooking. Um, I have tried for 14 years to fatten that man up. And he eats. Believe me, that boy can eat. Um, he ate two bowls the first the first day of it. Immediately, he ate two bowls of it. Then he we ate it again last night. He ate two more bowls of it. Big bowls. Um, so I would highly recommend this recipe. It really turned out good. Um, so when you start getting, and I use fresh corn off the cob because they've got corn on sale. So even if you don't grow your own corn, uh, they've corn is cheap right now at the grocery store. Um, I highly recommend trying this recipe. It was really good. Yeah. But if y'all get a chance, uh, go give that video a little bit of love and get it kind of circulating. Anyway, also, um, I need some suggestions for Saturday's show. Um, I know we're doing a lot of uh, summer stuff. Is there anything uh, you guys would like to see? Because I've been throwing a couple of uh, recipes around in my head, but. I absolutely think uh, cornstarch would work. Absolutely. Or you could omit it altogether. You wouldn't have to use it. Because I really didn't use that much flour at all. I said a fourth of a cup, but honestly, it. I look back on it when I was editing it, it's like, you didn't use a fourth of a cup. You used about a tablespoon. <laughs> I remember those days, <laughs> Oh, my God. My daughter, and she's in here, and she can hear me. That girl would throw things in the toilet. Do y'all remember that little, that commercial, uh, what was it called? Or not commercial, a cartoon. Uh, shoot. I can't remember. Uh, I can't want to say anime. That's not right. The Animaniacs. Down the hole. Remember that one? They flood that little thing. That baby would flush everything down the toilet. That one. Dear God, she, she flooded more toilets. <laughs> Every time that stupid cartoon would come on, I would think, Kendra, damn the whole everything. I smoked back then. Um, in fact, I didn't quit smoking until she was about 12 years old because I had to, to have the surgery. That was one of the requirements I had to quit smoking. But <laughs> that little child of mine flushed more cigarettes down the toilet. And those things ain't cheap. It's like brand new packs, brand new pack of Marlboro. And most of the time I, I would have to get the cheap cigarettes because I couldn't afford the Marlboros. But, you know, you know, it's payday. And you get a pack of Marlboro because that's what you can afford. You you know, every once in a while, get a good pack of cigarettes, right? She flush down the toilet. Ugh. <laughs> Lighters. 
Oh, she was a turkey. She's probably in there laughing her butt off right now. She was a she was a miss. This is true story of how I quit smoking. We were um, on our way to the cigarette barn. And we, at the time, we were smoking those cigaros because they were cheap. It's what we could afford. And, and it was like right after kind of, uh, or right before, I don't remember now. Uh, she was, I don't know, 10, 11, somewhere in that age range. But she's like, Mom, my New Year's resolution is that you'll quit smoking. And I was like, Kendra, I don't think that's quite how that works. <laughs> and, uh, but I needed to quit because they don't do uh, the surgery if you smoke. And, and so I had this real heart to heart prayer. I said, all right, father. I was like, I can't do this. I've, I've smoked for 24 year, years of my life. I can't do this without your help. <laughs> I can't. My husband smoked. I can't do this, you know, had this real conversation, you know, got back to the house and I told my husband, handed him the carton of cigarettes. I said, all right, I'm quitting. And he's like, yeah, all right, Missy, you, you've smoked for 24 years. And I'm like, nope, I, I'm giving it up this time. I, 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 me and God talked about it and I'm quitting. And he's like, mm, we'll see how long this lasts. And I did it. I didn't smoke one all day. Didn't have a craving for it. I did good. Well, that night, I said, but you're going to have to go like in the bedroom. You can't smoke around me. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll go in the bedroom. Well, that night he went in the, <laughs> in the bedroom and I could smell it. I was, you know, I'm just going to have one drag, just one drag. I went in there. I took one drag off that cigarette and it tasted like I was licking the bottom of an ashtray. I mean, nastiest taste I'd ever, I mean, awful. Thank you. Didn't touch your cigarette after that. True story. True, true story. <laughs> Asking you shall receive, you, you shall receive. True story. And that was, what? Well, Kendra was 12, so, and she's 19 now. So she was, that was her New Year's resolution. So, um, and then, but Keith, Keith went to vaping after that. So, because it was like, after that, the smell of it would make, and now it doesn't bother me to be around other people who smoke. And I certainly don't judge. I mean, I, I smoke for a very long time. I don't judge at all. But and it doesn't make me ill now at all. I can be around with other people who smoke and it doesn't bother me. Uh, but for a very long time, for like nearly, I'd say two years, probably, I couldn't even be around anybody who smoked or nothing. The smell of it would just make me putridly sick. It would just like, you know, I was one of those horrible ex-smokers. It would just make me gag. Now, exactly, Lippy, it was just, but I think it had to, you know, it had to be that it had to make me ill to, to, you know, make me want to quit that bad. And thank God, because they wouldn't have done the surgery. In fact, the morning of my surgery, they, they made me do a urine test to see if I had nicotine in my system. They, they drug tested me and nicotine tested me to make sure I didn't have any form of nicotine in my system. I mean, they're that serious about it because what it does, it, it affects your ability to heal. So they are just that serious about it. And I have no regrets. I mean, I really don't. And it sh sure as heck is a lot cheaper on us because his vape cost him um, $15 a month. So that's a lot cheaper than what we were spending on cigarettes. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can still smell it, you know, uh, but it doesn't make me ill anymore. No, I can do. I mean, I can be around uh, people who smoke now uh, and it doesn't bother me. So I have no desire to go back. Now, there are some days <laughs> it's like, oh, 
<laughs> anyway. Now it's just like, uh, they were one of the things that they told you after um, you had surgery, you know, you couldn't drink for six months after you had surgery because of addiction transfer is, you know, people would trade one addiction for the other food addiction to alcohol or whatever. Um, and I remember the, the first time I had a drink at, at my six month point, literally I, I had about that much and it hit me like that. I think the first thing I had was like a, um, a cranberry vodka. Good grief. I mean, literally had that much and it like to have put me on my backside. Thankfully I didn't have to drive that night. Keith was, we went out my, uh, Pastor is also a blues musician, and uh, he was playing uh, at the yard house that night. That like, and I still only drink once every four or five months. I mean, if he's playing or something, I'll have a drink, but or I drink a glass of wine or something. I can't drink beer or anything because I can't have anything carbonated. Oh my gosh. So anyway, how uh, I saw Sherry a while ago, uh, two family homestead posted that the hurricane or the tropical storm had made it to her house and they were getting a lot of crazy rain up there. And that, and uh, so how is uh, the weather where y'all are? Libby, you said it was really hot at y'all's house. How is that affecting y'all's garden and stuff? Shayla, what's the weather been like at your house? Is it still, are y'all still getting a lot of rain or is it just been hot or? Awesome. Yeah, I, mine's doing is doing good. Black eyed peas are starting to come in. I'm really excited about that because I got two black eyed plant black eyed pea plants out there. That's a lot of peas in one sentence. Um, mom said that uh, it was a lot cooler at their house today. I had called her earlier. I was talking to um, Red from Kiss My Grass Acres, and she we found out something really interesting that both of our dads were in the Air Force, and they were both stationed in Taiwan. I have purple hull black eyed peas. So they are, yeah, they're purple hole black eyed peas. Yeah, the cow peas is what I have. Hey, Sherry, there you are. Has it stopped raining yet since you were Cristobal? Is that that storm's name? How you like getting some uh, tropical weather there, my friend? Yeah. 
They grow on top. See, I don't know. I don't have a clue as to what that even means, Lippy. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to explain to me what you're even talking about later because I don't know what you're even referring to. I just know I didn't realize that black eyed pea plants got that big because I don't remember. I mean, Grinda was a black eyed pea farmer, but I was little. <laughs> I don't remember. And these plants are getting big. They weren't supposed to be viney, I didn't think, but these are were supposed to be bushy, but they're getting viney. And they're trying to reach out and take over everything. I'll get out tomorrow and show you because they're they're reaching out everywhere. And they're gonna try to get into my squash plants and they're gonna try to get into my tomato plant and they're gonna reach out everywhere. I'm glad that I kind of sat over in a corner because what I think is kind of cool, in all honesty, guys, is that people will come walking by and they like to stop and look at my my little garden over here. They'll just come look and it's kind of it's kind of neat. I think they probably grow on top. Uh, from what I'm seeing, it looks like they're that the beans are starting to come from the top. So probably so. That would make sense. Because that's where I'm seeing them from. And my little okra plant, I've got some little bitty purple okra. About that big. So I'm kind of excited about that. I don't know what's wrong with my Dr. Witchy's tomato plant, though. And it gets blooms all over it, and I take a little Q-tip out there, and I'm self-pollinating it. And that's worked for all my other tomato plants, but the Dr. Witchy's. And it's big, and it's huge. I mean, my Dr. Witchy's is really tall. It looks healthy. It, it looks as good as the rest of my tomato plants, but I cannot get it to make a tomato. Yeah, I, I bet it will be. I wish I, I'll have to take y'all out. I'll mark on you and show you this thing when we're done because it is like going to take over everything. It's, I'm glad it's over here in the hole because this thing is spreading out everywhere. But this Dr. Witchy's tomato plant will not make me a tomato. And I know that was, you know, Jess's from Roots and Refuge, her favorite tomato. And she bragged and bragged and bragged. And I'm like, I want me a yellow tomato. I wanted, I want a Dr. Witchy's tomato. And it's not making me a tomato yet. I know, but the rest of my tomato plants are, are doing well. And I'm thinking maybe it is because it's too hot down here. And it's just not, it does good in Arkansas, but it don't do good in Southeast Texas. That's kind of what I'm starting to think. Hey, Johnny, where's Nathan at tonight? Is he still not feeling good? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Shayla. Which I'm kind of disappointed because I sure did want to try one of those yellow tomatoes. Somebody, um, who was it? Somebody from work was telling me their neighbor had had a lot of luck with the uh, lemon drop tomato. Have y'all ever had one of those? Probably so, Sherry. <laughs> Um, which, and maybe when, and it may, um, uh, you know, if I can keep it alive that long, it might. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Um, and now I know. Okay. 
And it may have been if I had started it earlier, it would have done better. I, uh, and I have more seeds and maybe I will, I will start it later and try to get a fall crop out of it. But, uh, and two, you know, maybe when I'm back in North Texas, I can try to grow them. So, yeah, that's probably it then, because it sure hadn't done nothing. Well, it's just kind of disappointing, but um, that's what, anyway, that's what my coworker had said, that she had had a friend that had been growing lemon drop uh, tomatoes, and she said they were really good, and they were making a, uh, their, the lemon drop tomatoes were just producing a ton of tomatoes which I wish I had known that before I had done this one because I was really hoping to get some tomatoes. If I can keep this plant alive, maybe this fall I can get some tomatoes off of it. Better boys. Well, my others, these black beauties have, boy, they they are just going to town and my little uh, dark cherry, uh, cherry tomatoes, they're going to town. I mean, I'm going to have tomatoes out my ears of these dark varieties that I've got. Okay. Okay. That sounds like good advice, Lippy. I will definitely do that. <laughs> yes, Kendra likes my green tomatoes. I'm not picking them anymore, green, little brat. <laughs> And it, what's cool is all my windows face south because my apartment faces south. So, the uh, I've got Black Beauty and um, the other one I have is just a, it's a, Dollar Store Classic Tomato is the other one I have. It literally was just a hybrid classic red tomato uh, is the other one I've got out there. And then the, the little ones are uh, black cherry. So, you know, it's, I've been really, you know, I've been really lucky and that's as far as those go. So, but you know, it's, I'm just happy to grow stuff <laughs> at this point. My, my dad is growing some of the black cherries um, up there in North Texas. And mom said that they are just producing like crazy too. But they have been real lucky with squash. She said their squash plants are just going crazy. Uh, they've got corn growing as well. Uh, dad had a, a compost pile that he had planted a, peat, or a pear tree in. And then he planted some corn on the outside of it. And they've got corn growing like crazy. It's really kind of a cool thing. He got so, my dad used to grow a huge garden every year growing up. I mean, like on probably a quarter of an acre of land. Um, 
So, I mean, I always grew up with a huge garden, but he hadn't grown a garden in years until this year. It's just a little garden, but a little kind of like my little container garden, pretty much, and just a little area that he's growing some corn in. But he got so inspired by me growing that it inspired him to grow, grow some stuff. And, you know, when I get up there, we're already talking about putting in a, a container garden and building some raised beds is what we're wanting to do. Um, because the way I look at it, we're both too old at this point to do any in-ground gardening. <laughs> Neither one of us want to get, you know, bent, bent over on the in the ground. It, we're just, he's got a bad back. I've got a bad back. So... We want to build, um, I've seen like um, what Jareth has, you know, that raised bed. I love what she's done. Um, something to that, it, like high enough that we don't have to bend down and get down on the ground. Um, that's what I would like to do. Something or even... Um, uh, the Versards, theirs is really pretty. I'd love to do something like that. We don't need something, a huge area, just something big enough for mom and dad, Keith and I, Kendra, you know, something to that level. And of course, I've got to have some chickens, a goat or five. Um, Keith keeps, he said, every time you and your mother talk, it, your farm gets bigger. And I'm like, no, I just need some quail and a duck. And I want some guineas. And I don't know. M maybe a, a jersey, mini jersey. Lots of... I would love to have a pig, but of course in North Texas, they have a hog problem. So, I mean, technically, I guess I could just go hog hunting. Yeah, I want all the animals. But then my poor little husband, guys, y'all pray, pray for my husband, because in his mind, he's like, but you've got to take care of all these animals, Misty. How are you going to take care of all these animals? What are you going to... And his his little brain just explodes with the. But then I'm like, but if I get if my YouTube channel explodes gets big enough, then I could just hire me a Ben Turn. <laughs> you know, my poor husband. I'm like, we could get a farm hand. It would be okay. <laughs> Love you, Lippy. You have a great night, sweetie. Thank you for stopping in. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> oh, Lord. Visual, Sherry. Visual. But I don't know. I am just. You know, I keep reassuring him we'll get one new animal at a time. You know, 50 chickens and then I'll get a goat. <laughs> oh, my. I said garden first and then we'll, you know, garden and chickens. We'll start there. <laughs> I went and I, I was looking um, uh, 
Hey, Kimbo and Bose, how you doing, sweetie? Thank you for coming in. I sure appreciate it. No Marco cookies either. No. Um, so went to, um, I was looking, there was a nice little cute house in Newcastle that they want 65000 for. It's a nice little house. Two bedroom, two bath, uh, metal roof, swimming pool. It has a swimming pool. Two, uh, two car carport, fenced in yard. Nice, nice house. Like literally right down the street from, not street, road. There's not streets. They're, they're all dirt roads. Uh, from where I grew up. And 65,000. <sighs> but I mean, it, it wouldn't do me any good to buy a house that, because I'm already going to have a house eventually. <laughs> but it's like, but I can be up there now. I showed it to my mom. She's like, She's like, you probably could get the loan for it. And I said, yeah, I probably could. <laughs> it's cute. It's a cute little house. And what's so funny is I re they redid this house. I mean, they completely remodeled it. I It used to be a dump. Um, I remember the house. Um, but... There's a Dairy Queen about 15 miles north of us. They closed the Dairy Queen here in Conroe down. I want some Dairy Queen. That sounds good. I don't get paid till tomorrow. <laughs> okay, before we're done, let's talk. What's on the plate Saturday? What sounds good, guys? Give me some ideas. I need some ideas. Anything sound good to you? I was thinking uh, potential we could do um, DQ's taco salad. Was that an idea or is, are you just saying that's what sounds good to you? A taco salad? A salad? That sounds good. Taco salad would probably not take me a whole hour to make. I was thinking, uh, I even thought about doing maybe Swedish meatballs. I haven't done that yet. Because that's where the challenge is, is finding something that kind of lands me at an hour. It was in my, uh, my Betty Crocker book. Oh. So, in, 
I could do Swedish meatballs. There was Swedish meatballs, and then there was homemade pigs in a blanket and making the dough. Keith is like, oh, that sounds messy. You know, you can make them like using canned biscuits, but this this recipe actually has, has it making the, the dough and stuff. Hey, Little Fee Homestead, how are you? We are ta talking about what we're going to do for what's on the plate. So... Some of the options are Swedish meatballs. Um, I've done meatloaf. I've got Swiss Swiss steak. Well, Swiss steak says it takes two hours, so that might be a little bit much. Beef stroganoff might be an option. You were thinking about the okay. The Swedish meatballs. It says it takes an hour and ten minutes, but I'm sure some of that's in the prep. So if I did the prep before time, it takes beef, ground pork, onions, panko, parsley. Salt, pepper, Worcestershire, egg, and milk. And then you put it in a gravy. It looks really good. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, Crystal. So. Oh, uh, egg rolls are good. <laughs> We did the stuffed peppers last Saturday. Or Texas hash, which was what Keith voted for. Have y'all ha ever had uh, hash before? Hash is really good, too. Barbecue meatballs with cheese melt on top and then eat it on a bun. That's good, too. Well, what's interesting about this hash recipe, it's not how that we normally had hash or what we called hash because this is hamburger meat and rice. What we called hash was roast and potatoes. What what do you call hash? Ooh, this got set in something. I've got to... Yeah, anything barbecue and cheese is definitely sounds good. I got to clean this off. It got set in something. <laughs> is that a truck, right? Yeah, what I grew up calling eating hash was... Roast and potatoes and onions. But we are uh, getting close to up to an hour. So it'll be one of those. We'll either do some kind of meatball. Um, probably some kind of meatball. Hey, it's my life, Texas. How are you? I appreciate it. 
but we will we'll we'll figure it out <laughs> and it may be something totally different we'll honestly um i'll go to the store tomorrow and it i'll see what what's on sale you know the way uh meat and stuff is right now we'll see what we got on sale and uh we'll figure it out i'll let y'all you guys know thank you for uh Sherry, you can't even pull that, my friend. We all know better. <laughs> Thank you guys for showing up tonight. I love you. I appreciate you so much. Um, if you have not gone and checked out my corn chowder video, please go give it a watch. I would really appreciate it. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, come join us Saturday, 9.30 a.m., uh, what's on the plate with Mama Z? Thank you so much uh, for y'all's love and support. We'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a great night. <laughs>